Over to you now. Nakuma TFC renamed to Mount Kenya United under the ownership of uh, a politician and uh, people thought that uh, things would change at the helm but still there is that complaint of unpaid allowances and salaries from the playing unit. I think they picked their first point last weekend against Sharks and that was quite a surprise. They are playing Viga United this particular uh, weekend actually today and talking of Viga United they got beaten I think by Tasca last weekend 2-0. That I, what's your expectation? Do you think it's a, it will be a walk in the park for Viga United against Mount Kenya United? I think considering that um, Mount Kenya haven't got a win yet, if I'm yes. not wrong, yes. uh, in, in the season, it could be a very tough match for Vihiga. Uh, Mount Kenya have a couple of experienced players. Um, they know they are under pressure because they were almost at the same position last year before they got the energy and, and you know, the, the leadership changed and they started putting in some good results. Uh, but going into this match, knowing very well that these are some of the matches that they could pick at least three points, it, it's not going to be easy for um, uh, for Vihiga. Talking about the, uh, the, the players' welfare and, you know, some unpaid allowances and salaries, football not only in Kenya but worldwide is a very expensive venture and some of these guys that come in you know you look at it from the outside it looks very green the grass looks very green and lo it looks easy you look at the uh, at the wage bill and you see this is manageable but then you start looking at the nitty-gritties you know everyday training the preparation you know do they need lunch do they need double double sessions do the players need fair to go to where they they're going to do we have sick players do they need uh, uh, you know medical attention which needs to be paid when you start looking at these logistics then you realize that it's not as easy as it as it might uh, have looked before you got there so these are some of the things i think that this club is struggling with because you know in this day and age and after all these years that players have been complaining about their welfare and you know not being paid and all these things not being taken care of you would expect someone who comes into the uh, into the uh, uh, into the playing field uh, knows exactly what needs to to be done for the players welfare and to get to the club uh, to the to get the clubs to where they need to be so they're struggling with that yes but when you get to the 90 minutes i think it's going to be a very tough match for vihiga united not a walk in the park but definitely not an easy match for uh, Mount Kenya United. Another former club of yours, FC Leopards, is playing Zoya, a football club. Zoya has been the Kenyan version of Southampton, always getting raided. <laughs> uh, they are technical <laughs> beach. <laughs> getting, you know, stolen. Bernard Malala left for Bandara and mm -hmm. has been doing spectacularly good at the Dockers. Mm -hmm. But he also left with some key players. And Gourmet Football Club last season raided them and, you know, signed uh, several of their influential players. Mm -hmm. Do you think that has been such a setback to their title bid especially after getting promoted to top flight last season and they are playing fc leopard which is also getting into the this tie after recording three maximum <coughs> points last weekend against rangers uh -huh. um you know for zoya i think the way the team is set up um you, you know they are not set up so that they can win the kenyan premier league and I think they're doing a good job, uh, you know, bringing through the talent and developing it and actually exposing it so that these players get uh, better clubs in terms of payment, in terms of exposure. So when you go to play for Gormahia, you're almost certain of playing in the continental uh, competitions, number one, number two possibly getting into the uh, Kenya national team. So I think they're doing a good job. Even with the with losing of the players, they don't seem to be risking relegation like the other teams, some of the other clubs uh, have done. So uh, I watched Nzoya play against Matari United. They have a good team. They lost a lot of chances in their, I think that was their first or second match in the Kenyan Premier League. It was their first, if I'm not wrong. Um, they lost a lot of chances. They have very good players. One thing that I like about Zoya is that they bring young players through. So in this match, they had a player who was 18 years old. They had a player who had played for the Kenya U20 team. He was only 19. And this was his first season uh, in the Kenyan Premier League. So when you bring through young players who have great uh, ability and the talent, I don't see a chance for you going wrong, especially when you show them uh, that you have belief and faith in them. And and uh, Madara United, just like we spoke earlier, playing against Gourmet Football Club, an uphill task for Francis Kimanzi's charges and Dennis Oliech likely to feature. I know these are fixtures that everyone is looking forward to and probably with the comeback of Oliech on board, uh, a lot of fan attendance expected, the place will be crowded. Do you think the Slam Boys will get frightened 
by <laughs> <laughs> the signature of Oliech and even his presence on the pitch as well? Um, uh, it's it's an exciting moment. Definitely, uh, uh, you know, there'll be some nervousness at the beginning. It's it's just it's normal. But um, I think the boys have played together long enough. Yes. Um, uh, you know, to know how to handle themselves even when they face such a player. You know, um, and uh, I look back when I played for Matari United back then. Uh, most of the guys had not played. Uh, in the Kenyan Premier League or played, you know, in the international matches. But then we got to the Kenyan Premier League and played teams like Mumias, who had seasoned players. We played Gormaya, who had seasoned players. Uh, Tasca with uh, Ndege being one of the younger guys, but you know, they had players like Abu Bakar Yusuf, John Lichuku, they were very seasoned. But none of us was afraid. You know, because you were prepared well, we had worked together, we had worked the journey together. So when you get to such matches, it is this preparation that gives you the confidence to face such an opponent. So I think Matari United players, they have been prepared well to face a player like Dennis. It's just one. They don't have 11 Dennis or Jets. <laughs> so uh, it shouldn't be a problem for Matari United. Harold, <laughs> Jamie Lil Sugar playing Western Steamer uh, tomorrow. I think those are one of, uh, that is one of the fixtures slated for tomorrow. Jamie Lil against Western Steamer. Western Steamers, we speak right now, they have been in good form since getting promoted to top flight, sitting second uh, on the log, on 18 team log with 10 points. That tie, and Jamie Lil Sugar has not been doing uh, quite good despite uh, being one of those experienced teams in top flight. Do you think Steamer can continue with its good form against Jamie Lil, especially now that they are playing at home? Of course, I, they can uh, because uh, I, I happen to been Kisumu when Steamer played uh, Tasca Football Club. Yes. And uh, I could say in the beginning when they were starting the season, for me, I wasn't as that confident uh, as I am with them right now uh, because I, I didn't believe in the signings that they had. But that match against Tasca convinced me that there is something Western Steamer has that most of the other teams do not have. They have unknown players. And it, it's difficult to prepare against a team whose players you don't know. Most of the time, we go into a match, we go into preparation knowing that uh, Simon Mulama is going to be the midfield kingpin. This is how he plays, this is how he controls the ball. Uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the second half, he, he fizzles out because of maybe he doesn't have enough energy. It is easier to prepare against teams that uh, they have individuals than you know. But Steamer has that niche of players who are unknown, and it's going to be very difficult for the likes of Chemelin to prepare against them. And that's when they come up with surprises. They come up with the results that people do not expect, like the fixture they had with Tasca. So I believe as they go into this fixture, and having even won against the likes of Tasca, they'll be having a lot of confidence. The enthusiasm within the dressing room will be so high. So I believe uh, with that confidence going into that match, uh, the, I believe they, they expect to get a result, if not a win. Bandari started on a high after beating Goma Football Club mm -hmm. at the Mbaraki. This particular, t tomorrow afternoon they are playing Sony Sugar. Sony, uh, as we speak right now, sitting fourth while Bandari two places below on six. Bernard Malala has been uh, quite a revelation since he joined the uh, Dockers from Zoya Football Club. What do you make of that particular tie? I think... Uh, Looking at what Bernard Molala has achieved before and looking at, at uh, where he's heading, he's one o o of the few coaches I've seen who are willing to take that risk. And he's been tipped as one man probably who should take charge of one of the Arambe, the national team Arambe stars set up, even if it's under 20. I, I, I believe he's in the right direction. But the problem I, I think we have in Kenyan football is we, 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 we start... Uh, we, we start giving individuals uh, a lot of praise before they hit the <laughs> benchmark. Which for me, I, I believe it's very risky. He has performed well. Okay? He has performed very well. We count eggs, eggs before they are hatched. Yes, he has performed. <laughs> uh, let me tell you something. One of the few coaches, uh, William Muluy and Bernard Mola, they are on the right direction. Yes. Okay? They are taking a lot of risks with the young individuals. They are doing their own thing. They are not recycling players. They are doing something different from the rest of the coaching. That one I'll give it up to them, and they are on the right direction. But if we start talking about the national team, and yet uh, the coaches we are talking about have not won any championship, or they do not have uh, the experience of, of, of coaching at the continental level, it's going to be, it's like 
uh, you're putting somebody into a lion's den, okay? Then when he's slaughtered, you start complaining again. I think that time will come when the likes of uh, uh, Bernard Molala and William Muluya will be able to take uh, the national team. <laughs> 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 Okumbi was not ready, to be, to be honest, and, and uh, his time will come. W what we need to do is, is uh, having seen the likes of Mwalala and uh, William Muluya doing something good, what are we doing now to get them to the right platform, to get them to have the right mentality, to get them to start winning titles, for them to be ready for the national team? What are we doing about it? from the federation point of view or from the club point of view, what are we doing about it? Because we've already seen they have potential, okay? Are we assisting them? Are we giving them the right infrastructure for them to succeed, okay? Are we giving them the right impetus for them to succeed? So I think moving forward, it's, it's, it's crucial, even as Bandari uh, tackle uh, Sony, uh, Sony Sugar, Sugar to, uh, tomorrow, uh, I think he has already prepared the team well. Uh, he had a very good precision. They went to Zanzibar. You can see his mindset. Okay, he takes the team away from the normal environment they are used to, so that they can be able to concentrate during the preseason. And I can guarantee you, uh, Bandari is one of the title contenders for me. Okay, title going, contenders. Yes, going in, going into this match for me, I think they will win. I don't think it's going to be a very big problem uh, comparing uh, Bandari and Sony Sugar. Sony Sugar have lots of problems on their backyard. But Bandari don't. So I expect the players at Bandari, regardless of the situation, to turn up and win. Because everything, their welfare is sorted out. Playing for Bandari, you have all those allowances, you have your salary, you have your medical, you have everything sorted out for you. I okay. think I'll be the, 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 uh, the devil's advocate and, 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 <laughs> and, and say, um, uh, based, based on what uh, the coach achieved, uh, the second part of uh, the season last year or last season uh, coming into th this season he has a lot of pressure at Bandari okay and you look at him he's only won twice and I think he's tied the uh, three matches he hasn't lost yet but he's not even the top four and this is a, a spot where everyone expected him to be in this time of the league you know five matches you finish with great momentum you go in you start winning your matches first, first five ten matches top three top four and you know he's not there, he's not winning much. Out of five, he's won twice. It is a problem. And it could be a lot of pressure for him, which will then translate to pressure to the players, you know, because he will now start demanding more. If you lose a chance, then it's a problem. You know, when he came in, there was a lot of freshness, and you know, you could lose a chance, and he would clap and tell you, it's all right, well done, next time. But this it's not going to be happening this time around, because now teams are in front of them. Mathar United is up there. Uh, Western Steamer just came the other day despite the fact that they have been in the league long enough, you know, and they are uh, above them. So I think because of this pressure to perform and replicate the same results like last year, is going to cost Bandari this season. And uh, talking about coaching is such a risking decision. Simon, uh, uh, Pamzo Omolo was fired from Postal Rangers after a string of poor <laughs> results and George Maina has taken charge in acting capacity to be assisted by former long-serving international and I think one of their players, Pascal Ocheng. They are playing Kakamega Homeboys this particular afternoon, tomorrow afternoon and talking of Homeboys, it's a team that brags of also seasoned and experienced players in the name of Alan Wanga mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, Moses Mudavadi. Uh, Moses Mudavadi. And, uh, no, Afula, is there. Several of them having been mm -hmm. a tasker mm -hmm. FC. Do you think the woes of even the person who's taken over from uh, Sami Omolo might continue tomorrow? Uh, possibly, and you know, the exit of Pamzo, you know, everyone who's in the football cycles know, knows um, what once, is capable of. What, once a technical director is brought into your team, you know, that's a message to the head coach. You know, and so it was not surprising that he left. Uh, Pamzo um, was asked to step aside or was fired. Um, going into this match, I think uh, those are some of the things that they will be struggling with. You know, uh, who's next now? Is it the players? Is it the coaches? You know, do we have? If we don't win this match, are we next on the firing line? Because once a coach is sent away because of performance. Trust me, if you come next, you are going to be judged by that. If you start performing, then you have a chance of staying. If you do not perform, then 
the consequences are, uh, consequences are the same. Uh, playing against a team that has been together long enough, they, I think it's one of the teams that um, has also signed a lot of players. They've signed 13, three of them renewing their contracts, including uh, Moses Mudavadi and then all others uh, uh, new signings. Um, when I looked at their performance against AFC Leopards in Buhungu, um, Leopards that wasn't so good, but also had, had, had not changed the starting lineup so much. We still had the Nabuires and everyone in there. Uh, I think it's going to be a very tough match for Posta Rangers. They lost a the coach. There's a big transition. Some of the players are struggling because of non-payment and no motivation in the team. You know, there's a lot of inside politics that go around the results that Posta are posting today. So if they put their heads together early enough, they might be able to secure at least a point. But, you know, if some of these things have not yet been taken care of, the fate is the same. A lot of problems around the results that Posta are posting today. That is Simon Sebe Molama. <laughs> For you, but as we wind up on Cape Premier League review, Harold, uh, the last clash probably will see Ulindi starts the military side playing against Zoo. Zoo, since they parted ways, they really. Uh, I don't know whether they were raided or they willingly agreed to release Michael Madoya 2017 mm. overall KPL of the year. Mm. Has it been such a problem for them parting ways with him? I, I think every and Ulindi <coughs> stars on the other side also struggling despite having been a team that boasted of positive results before. I think every football club uh, will never want to lose its best player. You you'll always allow a player to leave. But deep inside your heart, you do not want that kind of particular player uh, to leave. But eventually, if, if a player has decided he wants to leave, you only have to let him go. What you need to do as a football club, and I think that is what Zoo are doing, is to try and find somebody else whom you can replace into that particular position. Losing the likes of Kip Kirui and yes, Madoya. Yes, Nicolas. Yes, it's, it's, it's not that easy. Okay, uh, Their contracts were almost... Uh, uh, expiring by the time they were being released so there was no need of holding up because they wanted to leave but I believe moving forward it also depends on the policy of the club I believe uh, one of the principles of Zoo FC is to nurture young talent okay and maybe release that particular talent so if the likes of Madoya have left if the likes of Kip Kirui have left the only thing that Zoo can do is to find players who they can replace and fit into those particular positions. And looking at the way they have started this season, they have started much better than the way they have started in the previous two seasons. So I believe there is something good going on for them. Uh, and, and as they face Ulinzi, uh, this season Ulinzi also has been 50-50. You don't know whether they are title challengers. You don't know if they are going to be a mid-table team. Uh, the the results they are posting they're not that no consistency no, no, there is no consistency they are not that confidence the, the Lindsay we know about okay is not the the, the Lindsay we are seeing at this particular moment <coughs> but I believe uh, as as we start this season it is still too early to be judging most of these clubs some of them will be posting good performances some of them will not maybe because of a variety of reasons uh, the fitness levels are not up there yet, uh, the consistency is not there, the camaraderie within the squad is also not there, so it is too early. But for, for that particular fixture, uh, for me, I think both sides will, will, will fight for the points, uh, they will go at each other, we, we all know Lindsay is a physical side, and we also know uh, Zoo, they might have young players, but they can, can also apply the physicality into the game. Um, going to the match for me, Maybe a draw for me. I don't think uh, it's going to elicit a lot of uh, firepower in front of goal. Uh, and for that reason, maybe a draw. Another, another aspect in Kenyan football that yesterday elicited, you know, heated debate mm. in one of the sports journalistic forums, scribes arguing over it, is the introduction of banters in Kenyan football. We've mm. seen several clubs tweeting and, you mm. know, mm. those tweets are sort of, you know, psychological and, you know, trying to uh, attack the opponent. Madara United, yes. for example, tweeted and tagged former Gourmet tactician Dylan Carr, mm -hmm. telling him uh, whether he talked to his 
successor <laughs> you know Hassan uh, Okte mm -hmm. with regard to what he's supposed to expect at the slam boys when the True. two teams lock horns tomorrow there has been a lot of banters and i don't know whether it, the twitter handlers of these local clubs are emulating or not the uh, foreign clubs are doing especially borussia dortmund and ac roma are very good at bantering mm. on twitter what's the impact of this is it for the positive of the game or it's a bit pedestrian it depends huh? uh what's the purpose of social media in a football club if you start by that definition, then maybe we'll be able to understand why football clubs need to have social media pages and to have the right content in these social media, media pages. Uh, I will give an, a natural example. As you're walking around the streets in town, uh, you will find commodities being displayed on, on windows. Okay, A social media page of a football club is, 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 like, is like a, a, a display. It's, it's like you're doing window shopping. Okay, when you see something attractive on the other side of the window, you'll be forced to enter into the shop and maybe inquire about that particular commodity and eventually buy it. Correct? So, the same role that uh, these displays do at the shops is the same role that social media accounts of sports organizations are supposed to play. They are gateways into the football clubs. If the content within the social media is all about bantering, then we are getting it wrong. Banter is right. Once in a while, it is good. But professionally, if you keep on every now and then, your content is about bantering, uh, then for me, I, I will not be attracted to whatever you have. Because that, that's all you got. Okay? It's just banter. Simon Sepe Mulama, over to you. Yes, uh, short in terms of this banter. <laughs> I think banter, I think we need them because... Do they raise uh, the profile of we the need game them, We need them, we need them. Uh, you know, FC Leopards <laughs> playing against Gormahia, we need the banter. You know, we need the psych, we need the excitement. We need to get charged so that you guys, you should know we're, you're not beating us and we're telling you we're winning against you, so let's meet at the field. But does it have the, is the effect that is desired? You know, not... Are we sure that everyone who's on Twitter and seeing the banter will be the same guys that attend the stadium? That could be the problem. You know, it could be the guys behind the keyboard like you, you and I. Yes. And then anyone else who goes to the stadium had not seen this, did not have a chance. Maybe he doesn't have even a cell phone that can access that. You know, so if the banter is, is used re the right way and we go beyond the Twitter and meet those guys who cannot even access the internet, you know, and let's have this banter, but you know, it doesn't have to be physical, I think it's good for the game because, you know, I challenge you, if you think you're going to beat us, let's meet at the stadium, you know, and then I'll be mocking you after the match, you know, or during the match. We had those back in the day, we, we had those uh, with Gormahia and, uh, and FC Leopards. Recently it has risen, Matari United, Gormahia when they play you'll see banter you know so we need them to to, to get us uh, charged up and excited about the match but it has to have the right ending you know it has to reach the correct people it has to, to have the right effect so that the guy the main effect uh, the, the main aim should be to get you guys to the stadium and cheering up the boys and paying the get fees at the gate so that the boys uh, can get their uh, you know their allowances right their salaries right and the motivation and everything that goes with it Finally, overally, Kenyan football, new year, new expectations, the national team to the uh, this year's African Cup of Nations after 15 years of waiting, the last time they featured there was in 2004. Uh, mechanisms that should be put in place in terms of preparedness, what uh, will be your message to the relevant stakeholders, especially those handling the national team, if you have to get to Afcon, Continental Shoppies and s Sparkle? Um, handlers of the national team. I think um, um, just, you know, the most important thing is to give the coach the support he needs. If he wants friendlies, let him have friendlies. If he needs more time with the players, try to find a way of accommodating that in the busy schedule that everyone has so that he can have the time that he needs with the players. But the biggest challenge is with the players, you know, because the few times that we were at the Cup of Nations, we had very few players who played outside Kenya. Now, this time around, we have a lot of players who played outside of the country. And maybe recently, when Francis Kimazi and Minne came together, is when we can see at least two, three local players starting in the starting lineup. You know, so the challenge is, when we had players that had not crossed the borders to play as professionals, we got to the Cup of Nations, and at least we won a match. Now that we have guys that have crossed the borders, 
you know, what statement, what legacy is every one of you guys as a player leaving the stage with? Because I'm not sure if Victor Wanyama will play another Cup of Nations yes. or another, another World Cup if we don't make it to the 2022. So what legacy are you leaving behind? Having been that player that is more experienced than your predecessors, uh, who has been more exposed and now has the big stage to carry the flag and the name of our country. The biggest challenge is to the players. Harold, there has been inconsistencies in terms of selection uh, players who will represent the country during uh, continental and even international assignments. And uh, you know that has also uh, drew huge attention and s a lot of criticism from football quarters. Getting into this showpiece, which is slated for a few months from now as we speak, do you think Sebastian Mene, the Frenchman, should stick to the squad that uh, has conquered in qualification, beating Ethiopia and uh, beating Black Stars? of Ghana of, of course a majority of the players who have featured uh, in the in the qualifiers of the Africa Cup of Nations uh, I expect most of them uh, to board the plane uh, and turn up for Kenya in the Africa Cup of Nations but one of the reasons why we have inconsistencies at the national team is because we don't have consistency at the leadership level okay today we have this coach tomorrow we have another coach so each coach has his own tactics He's going to look for his own players whom he believes will be able to fulfill whatever he wants in, in his uh, tactical program. Uh, secondly, also, we have some players who have had uh, injuries. Uh, of late, you can see Calabar has not been featuring because he, he's been having injury. Even uh, Dave, David Checho, we know. Yes. Uh, uh, the players also themselves, eh, some of them are, are not having consistency at the club level. Okay, they are not playing regularly. Okay, so by the time they come into the national team, you find uh, their form level is not as where you expect. So you find another player who's been having consistency at his club level will definitely perform better in training and hence will get a nod at the starting lineup. That's not to say uh, there are times that uh, a coach may overlook the form of a player and pick a player because of his, his experience. For example, if, if for exa we, Victor Wanyam has not been featuring uh, regularly at Tottenham Hotspur, okay? so by the time you call him to the national team, you cannot call him and then put him on the bench. There's no point of calling him. Okay, there's no point. And talking, <laughs> talking, <laughs> talking about the same, Victor yes. Wanyama is such an excellent player, uh, extremely talented. He's mm. conquered at Celtic, at Southampton, now at Spurs, but of late not getting regular football club. Mm. If the situation continues like this, and mm -hmm. a few months to AFCON, mm -hmm. and of course he happens to be called, of which he will be called definitely, he's mm -hmm. the captain for the national team, mm -hmm. and he's done much for the country. Should he get guaranteed of a spot in the national team, despite the fact that he's not getting regular playing time at club level? From my perspective, he or may that get. that is debatable. From my, it is debatable. From my perspective, he may get guarantee of a call up, okay, but he may not get a guarantee of starting. I'm saying that because uh, Victor Wanyama's presence in the dressing room is very important, whether he's playing or not, it's very important. A lot of players who are young in the national team, they look up to him. They look up to him for guidance, and his experience might be key. Even at some point. We might even, uh, Dennis Olech has already come back into Kenyan football. At some point, we may need him at the national team, not to play, okay? But because of his experience, because of, of his exposure, he may be able to guide these players off the pitch uh, so that they can get the right performances on the pitch. For example, if the coach uh, gives you a hair dry treatment at halftime, and you feel that the coach uh, maybe has a thing or two to work against you, somebody like Dennis Olech or Victor Wanyama can come and try and convince you and tell you at this particular moment you did wrong. That's why the coach was so hard at you. Next time, try and do something different or do one, two, three, four, five so that uh, the coach cannot be. You see, such kind of, he can be the, that brother who puts an, an arm on your shoulder and convince you and see the point that the coach plays. So it's very important uh, to have these experienced players within the squad. It's not how much they play. Their form will determine whether they play or not. Okay? Because you might be injured and I call into the national team, you're definitely going to play. Not going to play. Okay? So why am I calling into the national team? So that you can play a certain role with these young fellas into the national team. Yeah. I think it's important for him. Uh, 
I think lastly, before we wind up, I think it's important for Victor to be there. It is important that he gets the fitness that he needs um, uh, because the country needs him to be in that field because he comes with the attitude. And, and you know, you talk to any football person, yes, the fitness, uh, yes, the ability. It's because you have the ability. That's why you're playing even to the, in the club that you're playing. But then the right attitude wins you matches and wins you championships. Victor has been exposed enough. He knows the right attitude to put in when we really need him, when we are uh, when the stakes are high and we are when we are at that big stage. So no doubt we need him on that field and I hope that in the Cup of African Cup of Nations he'll be the one to get us at least to the quarterfinals. Thanks gentlemen for coming through. Fantastic discussion, quality conversation. It has been on the touchline no, I I, for this particular afternoon, 5th of January, the year 2019. We're just talking matters, sports and of course two robust gentlemen joining me to put things into perspective as far as football. Uh, local headlines in the country is concerned. Simon Sepe Mulama, former international, played for FC and uh, Madara United and hopefully we shall be looking forward to a scenario where FC Leopards as well will recall him to solve their <laughs> midfielding tribulations and Harold Dege prominently featured under Jacob Ghost Mule at Task FC and maybe when Task starts struggling under Robert the bullish Matano he can also be recalled now that Dennis the menace Oliech has set the pace. It's been uh, the touchline we still continue. We're just taking a short break. Of course, coming up next is how sports can spur economy. Uh, uh, well packaged, featured by, done by our very own Halligan Agade. Don't go away. Stay tuned. Continue talking to us at Wasike Maxwell at touchline 254 and at Y254 channel. Always a pleasure having on board. Stay tuned. Don't go away. Continue enjoying.